Dear friends, today I am flying with the rising star of African aviation. Which airline am I flying? Ethiopian! This airline leads Africa by number of destinations, revenue, and profit. I flew with Ethiopian before in 2015 and I had a very good experience. Today I am taking Ethiopian from Singapore through their hub in Addis Ababa and on to Beirut, Lebanon. Immigration was efficient and quick as always at Changi. Ethiopian does not have their own lounge in Singapore but they contract with the SATS lounge in Terminal 2. Now entering the lounge, let's talk about the exciting stuff first. We can always talk about boring things like seating later. The choice of food was quite decent. Uh, the dal was very excellent and they had a nice selection of cheese. If I could offer one recommendation to this lounge, it's to offer more fresh vegetables and fruit. This lounge has a nice atmosphere and I especially like the windows to the outside. The bathroom was quite clean and had showers. There are two massage chairs in the lounge, which is a nice bonus. And I have to say I enjoyed them a little bit more than necessary. But this was a good way to relax before a long flight taking off at 2 a.m. All right, enough of the lounge. It was a pretty good experience. Let's go to the gate. The one thing and perhaps only thing that I don't like about Changi is that the security check is located at the gates. Our plane was a two-year-old 787-8. I always liked flying the Dreamliner. Boarding was on time and I was greeted by very friendly flight attendants, which I remember hospitality also stood out the last time I flew Ethiopian. Business class was in a 222 configuration and economy was in a 333. Pitch in economy was good. I am fairly tall and I had plenty of room to spare. I even got a amenity kit in regular economy. I'm gonna keep these red socks for special occasions. And this is their route map. The flights within Ethiopia, within Africa, and they also have a good worldwide network. Ethiopian's fleet mainly consists of Boeing, both on the narrow and wide body side. And the only Airbus they have is the A350. And here is our route for today. We are crossing straight across the Indian Ocean. The safety video also incorporates humor, which is common these days. But I don't get what these binoculars are about. Shortly after takeoff, which was at 2 a.m., uh, dinner was served and I had pre-ordered Asian vegetarian meal, which consisted of rice with lentils and paneer. Yes, I love paneer. In fact, the meal was exceptionally delicious. Let's have a quick look at the IFE. The IFE's touchscreen was quite responsive. There were plenty of movies to choose from on the IFE. I like it when in airplanes the water in washroom comes out automatically and you don't have to keep pressing a button to get a proper hand wash. The flight was pretty empty and I was lucky to have three seats to myself. I got a pretty good sleep. I woke up a few hours later as we were entering Somalian airspace. What I don't like about the Dreamliner is that the crew can lock the windows. For breakfast, I initially got something with meat, but when I mentioned I ordered a vegetarian meal, I got a second one, and it was exceptionally delicious. In fact, I would highly recommend anyone flying Ethiopian to order Asian vegetarian or Indian vegetarian meal. 
As we descended into Addis Ababa, the sun slowly rose behind us, which gave me beautiful sights of the plains and mountains of Ethiopia. You will notice in this video that I'm quite enthusiastic about Ethiopian. Ethiopian is a Star Alliance member, so as such I was earning miles with United. It is more than 70 years old and currently flies to 125 destinations, carrying around 11 million passengers per year. Now this may be small compared to the largest airlines in the world, which carry up to 200 million passengers be year, per year. But nevertheless, I'm a big fan of Ethiopian. Ethiopian Airlines is not necessarily set up for success. For one, they operate from a country which has one of the lowest GDP per capita in the world. And secondly, they are fully government owned which is usually not a recipe for success. But nevertheless, in their 70-year history, Ethiopian has always been a well-run business and has survived and prospered through war and political unrest. Ethiopian set out with a big vision 2025 to become Africa's leading airline. And if you ask me, they have already achieved this. Looking at their route map, Ethiopia has a lot of 5th Freedom flights. Uh, I love 5th Freedom flights in general. Hopefully I can do more in the future. We touched down in Addis Ababa ahead of schedule. Welcome to Africa! We passed by a beautiful A350 and I think the Ethiopian logo looks beautiful on it. I love it when you get to a light at a remote position, not directly at the gate, because you can see the airplane from up close. Look at the dimensions of these engines, they are just enormous. You can't get a true feel for the sheer size of these airplanes when you exit by jet bridge. Good morning from Ethiopia. We were taken to the terminal by bus. Now, if you have a long layover in Addis Ababa, you will get a hotel room courtesy of Ethiopian Airlines. When I checked in in Singapore, I got a paper which I then had to take to the transfer counter and they gave me a voucher for the hotel as well as a card which allows me to get a free transit visa. I had a 15 hour uh, layover in Addis Ababa on this trip and I spent the day sightseeing in the city as well as hiking into the mountains and seeing some small villages and churches. I will make a separate video on my layover in Addis Ababa. You can expect that coming up in the next weeks. But for this video I will focus on the flights. After my 15 hour layover, I arrived back at the airport quite late um, because the airport or the shuttle didn't pick me up on time. I arrived at the gate just in time for boarding for my flight to Beirut. To my pleasant surprise, I got upgraded to business class for the second flight. Passengers traveling in business class as well as Star Alliance Gold can board from a completely separate gate in Addis Ababa and get taken to the airplane in a special bus which is less crowded and has more comfortable seating. The second leg from Ethiopia to Beirut was on a 3 year old Boeing 737. We received a menu for, for dinner choices, but I was not particularly hungry because I ate a good dinner at the hotel. I was quite tired from hiking 26 kilometers that day, which is almost 16 miles uh, through Addis Ababa, so I slept the majority of this 4 hour flight. 
I only woke up actually once we landed again in Beirut. I've been in Lebanon before and I love this country. After spending one night in Beirut, I went on to visit Syria. And if you are interested in seeing about my experience in Syria, I will post links in the description below to four videos I made about my trip to Syria. One thing that I forgot to mention in my last video is that I had a challenge in my uh, review from Middle East Airlines. I, I posed the challenge, what is my favorite plane? The person who guessed what is my favorite airplane first is... Uh, Alright, so congratulations, Kay. And number two is Gosia's home cooking channel, which features delicious recipes. So congratulations to both of you. Also stay tuned, I will post soon a video of my stopover and day of sightseeing in Addis Ababa. Alright my friends, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Shukran ma'asalama.